on the island of Newfoundland, upon the Selwyn's coast, lies the little town of Virgil, to whom all things is told. There are so many islands that lie just off her shores, and when the cold you can hear the billows roar The people from the village Make their living from the sea They like their independence It shows that they are free Some fish in their small boats In the wind and sleep while others make their living on the offshore called their fleet they've known their share of tragedy down through the years and when the memories overcome they show their grief with tears For they have lost some loved ones To the furies of the sea For heartaches and heartbreaks Are locked in memory This village has got beauty Carved on its rugged shore Seven miles of pure white sand who could ask for more? The mountains and the valleys Where the rivers run so fast And the salmon rise to the sportsman's fly As he makes another cast Tell the people of this valley Love their native bones for anyone who goes away, oh surely will return. It's like that lifelong mystery, the answer you won't know. What makes this rugged bellies burn so deeply in your soul? This rugged village burns so deeply in your soul. Good evening, and welcome to This Week in Review. Tonight in our stories, we have Scotiabank Hockey Kids Principal's Report. Please stay tuned for these stories after this. Try your luck on Wednesday and play TV bingo sponsored by the grad class. Cards are 6 for $5 and can be bought from any member of the grad class or in most stores around town. On Tuesday, Storm Stadium was filled with excitement as a cameraman from CBC was there to film the hockey team Virgil Gauls to appear on Hockey Night in Canada. I asked several people what they thought of it and this was their response. I think it's absolutely awesome. We're really excited. I'm glad to see a lot of people come out and uh, I think the kids are really excited. It's going to put Virgil on the map once again and uh, I hope everybody sees it right across Canada and uh, knows where Virgil is and what we're all about. Go Virgil! Just fantastic and uh, for such a small time to accomplish such a thing, uh, it's almost unbelievable. And uh, I'd like to say thank you to Scotiabank and come in Mr. Burton, who I'm sure played at some part. Wonderful, great publicity for Virgil Minor Hockey, and uh, Scotiabank has been a wonderful uh, sponsor for uh, Minor Hockey, and it's because of Scotiabank and the contest that um, you and CBC and everybody's here, so keep watching on uh, Saturday Night Hockey Night in Canada, and you might see yourself. Absolutely perfect. Uh, any national publicity we get can't help. Can't help. We must help. <laughs> so there. If we get announced as finalists for Akiviel tonight, it'll be the perfectest of perfect. Nice to come up here. It's nice to come up here and 
breathe in all the cold air and smell some good old coca froys. So what do you think about the CNC coming out and doing the stuff rocking in Canada? Oh yeah, it's pretty cool. Just come here to the small town of Virgil. Yeah. You could see yourself on TV. What are you thinking of? Bring the whole community together. I think we need something to put us on the map. Why not? And we just see if we see if everybody else can follow this and whatever. It'll take us further than Virgil probably ever went before. I think it's great. Mr. Chis Burton, manager of Scotia Bank, which has sponsored the team, was on hand to give each member of the team towels with Aki Night in Canada logos on them and Aki Pox. Tune in to Aki Night in Canada on March the 19th to watch our team open up the game at around 8 p.m. I went over to the school for Mr. Penny to give his principal's report. Uh, good afternoon. I want to thank Maxine for uh, coming in uh, once again. It's been a little while I think, since we've last chatted, so uh, some of the things I'll report on uh, may be repeat from the last time, but uh, I don't think it'll be too much of that. Uh, I guess first of all, I just want to start by um, saying that uh, we have uh, 68 school days left in a year, uh, and that's right till June 24th, uh, so therefore there's 58 school days left before exams start for students in grades 7 to 12, so uh, the year is flying by very quickly, uh, still an awful lot of work left to do, so certainly want to encourage uh, all students, and not only 7 to 12, but all students in K to, K to 12, um, to uh, kind of pick things up and uh, even though the weather is going to get a little bit nicer a uh, little tougher to get kids in nighttime I'm sure to do homework and whatnot but uh, you know this is really the the most important down the stretch usually the most important time of the year so uh, certainly encourage all students and parents to make sure that their, their, their children are in and uh, and doing necessary work uh, along with uh, the 7 to 12 uh, the grades 3 and 6 we'll be doing CRTs uh, that will be happening um, this month, uh, and then when we get into May and June, and uh, uh, we will be sending them information to parents for grades three and six, uh, and I'll also report on a couple other things on that uh, towards the end. Uh, we've uh, been involved, obviously, in a number of things since we last chatted. I uh, just want to just report on uh, on some of those things. Our FAST program has, um, has ended. Uh, that ended on December the 13th, and I'd just like to report that uh, Overall, and the feedback we got, the FAST program went really well. Uh, for those who are not familiar with the FAST program, um, it stands for Family and Schools Together. And with the help of the ELP committee, uh, a number of other volunteers, and the money from uh, from Western ELF, I think it's who it's from, uh, the program looked at. Uh, we had eight families uh, where they had at least one child in their family who was ages four to nine. Uh, we're in for uh, eight Sundays, or sorry, eight Mondays in a row. And we a uh, number of activities for, for about a three-hour period. Um, and just wanted to say that uh, it looks like the program will go ahead uh, in the fall. And certainly uh, encourage, um, again, families who have at least one child ages four to nine at that time uh, to, to apply for it. Obviously, there will be more information coming up in, into September. But uh, you know, the program went really well, and I expect to continue next year. Um, since we last chatted, uh, obviously we've had our uh, Christmas concerts, and again, kids did really well. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Froud, the teachers, and especially the students uh, for doing a fine job at our Christmas concert, and uh, it was nice to see uh, another huge turnout from the, uh, the community. Uh, our awards night, uh, which obviously was for students in grades 7 to 12 of last year. Uh, this year we had um, $5,800 plus. Uh, donated to students, a um, couple of new scholarships uh, were given out, uh, some substantial amount of money. So, uh, you know, again, I want to thank uh, the entire community, businesses, organizations, individuals who donated that money, and uh, obviously all went to students, and certainly congratulations to all the winners. Uh, a few weeks back, uh, our students in K-8 to had a respect day, and again, I want to thank the respect team. And the leaders responsible for the respect team, uh, who spent uh, the entire day uh, focusing on obviously respect, um, bullying, and whatnot. There was a number of presentations by the respect team. Uh, there were some activities in the gym, and overall the day went very well and seemed to be very enjoyed by our students. Uh, on the topic of bullying, um, we've now ended the bullying surveys two weeks ago. 
uh, all teachers and students participated in uh, an online bullying survey and parents were given the option last week to do the same. Um, now this is the first time uh, that schools are doing that and all schools in the Western School District uh, are doing the bullying survey and my understanding is that we will get a report back, uh, some of them in the future, hopefully it won't be too late in the future, um, and what kind of reporting period uh, and what we will provide back to parents um, I don't know at this time, but uh, I'm sure there will be some kind of report that we may be sending home uh, by your child. Um, maybe some things that we'll put on BBS or whatnot. But uh, once that's available, I will certainly uh, let you know. I uh, also want to uh, thank the uh, groups and individuals who sent in uh, some snacks and whatnot for Teacher Staff Appreciation Week. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Uh, I think we put a, a note of thanks on TV. But again, uh, a big thank you to, uh, to all those involved in that. Uh, we've added re another recycling blitz. Uh, I think the last recycling blitz, uh, I think, brought in about 8,000 uh, recycling items. Uh, that's a little bit less than what was in the past. We're usually, the, the three recycling blitz that I can recall in the past were around 10,000 items. Uh, this one was 8,000, but it's the second one this year. Uh, so again, I want to thank uh, the parents and students for sending uh, sending the recycling. Uh, again, the money uh, will go to good use. Uh, I mentioned in the past uh, where a lot of our monies go to. Uh, once again, the red team were the winners um, or the group that brought in the most. And actually, uh, Thursday afternoon, uh, Mrs. Penny was meeting with those, or met with those students to uh, discuss prizes and whatnot. So again, a big thank you to those who took part in that. Um, now, a few other things that's coming up, some things I may forget, uh, well, no, sorry, uh, one other thing was the book fair. Uh, our book fair ended on Thursday, and we actually, uh, not what we made, but uh, the book fair brought in uh, over $1,600. Um, so if we consider it's two and a half days, uh, I think that's phenomenal. So again, thanks to everyone who, come, who came out to support us on that. Um, now, the way that works, uh, the school gets kind of, um, I'm going to say coupons, I don't know if that's the right word or not, but we kind of get, I'll say a coupon from the Scholastic Book Company. Um, but what we do is, out of that, those coupons, we purchase books for our school. Uh, so again, and how much uh, money or how much the dollar value was, was placed on that coupon, at this time I don't know, but uh, I'm going to suspect somewhere around three or $400 possibly in books that we can get. Uh, and again, like I said, that will go directly back into our classrooms and uh, in, into our library. A number of things that, that's coming up. Uh, one is um, we are now uh, in the process of just about completing our school development plan, which is a three-year plan that we look at uh, for our school. Uh, involved in that is we do one year at a time, so we've got a one-year plan in place. And we're going to have what's called an external review uh, the second week in May. Uh, yes, second week in May. And what it is is that there's a, a group of teachers, uh, administrators will come in, and they will do interviews with our students, uh, our staff, uh, parents. So just kind of give everyone the heads up that uh, some parents we may be contacting uh, and ask you to, to do an interview. Um, some of your, your children will have an opportunity to do an interview as well, and that's with your permission. Uh, but again, over the next, uh, certainly next four or five weeks, uh, there will be some things coming home, letters and whatnot in relation to that, and uh, just to, to kind of give you an heads up. Uh, the grade 7 to 12 report cards um, have gone home. Um, I can't say I'm completely pleased. Uh, I guess we'll never be completely pleased. Um, this was probably the, the lowest we've seen in, in a number of years on the number of students that had 85 and over. Out of 75 students in 7 to 12, we had 12 students who had 85 average and over. And the last few years, and I know our numbers are dropping a bit, but uh, we're about the same as last year in regards of our enrollment. And uh, we had, uh, I'm going to estimate about 19 or 20 kids last year who had um, 85 and over. Now, for 80 and over, we had 30 students, so obviously that's a little bit better. But, uh, you know, again, I mentioned at the beginning that there's, uh, you know, we're down, down to the stretch for the remainder of the year. I mean, uh, a number of our kids that got between 80 and 84.9 can now probably make that jump to, to 85. And then some kids probably getting real close to 80 can make that jump over to 80. So again, certainly encourage uh, all students to uh, put a little bit more effort into it. Um, 
again, every night they should be doing so much work. Uh, you know, it's not necessarily called homework. Um, you know, there's always things they can be doing, reviewing some material, um, getting ready for tests, and certainly getting ready for the finals, which again, as I said, is like 59, 58, 59 days away. Uh, with regard to homework, um, we are in the process of developing an homework policy. Uh, there's been some comments uh, and questions in the past as we brought up in our, our school council meetings. Uh, they had comments from other schools on, on the coast uh, wondering about what our policies are and, and some parents in those communities are saying that Birds Academy has a OMER policy and we don't. Uh, I'm hoping that over the next couple of weeks uh, that we will and once that policy is done, uh, completed, uh, a copy will be sent home to parents. Uh, I mentioned 7 to 12 report cards. Uh, K to 6 report cards will go out on March I think it's the 25th, that's a Friday, and then open notice will go ahead to Monday and Tuesday after that. And again, that's for K to 6. Uh, that will be the last reporting period for K to 6 until the end of the year. 7 to 12, we'll have one more reporting period, uh, which for open that will get out before Easter. Um, if not, be soon after we come back uh, after Easter. But right now, it looks like we'll get that in before Easter. Also regarding CRTs, uh, one thing that our school council has, has mentioned and one of our school council goals is to have a presentation uh, to parents who have children in grades 3, 6, and 9. Um, I was open to get that done in March. Um, again, with so much things on the go and been so busy, I'm not too sure if, if March we will fit it in or not, but I hope again that we'll get it in before, uh, before Easter break. And again, I'll, I'll be... Uh, I'll be sending information to BBS uh, once we get closer to that uh, that date. We mentioned here before um, that uh, this year the the drama festival uh, we will be hosting. Uh, that's going in on Mar uh, sorry on April the eighth and the 9th, which is a, f a Friday and Saturday. Uh, I believe we have three schools coming in, uh, three or four, and in line with our school. So. Uh, Certainly looking forward to it. Uh, Mr. Ouse and um, Mrs. Banfield has been putting a lot of, uh, lot of work into that. So uh, kids have been working hard. And uh, we're certainly looking forward to a good time uh, um, at that. And I strongly encourage uh, that once the information is put on BBS regarding the times of the productions, uh, not only for our school but for the other schools, I encourage uh, all students and, uh, and parents and, and community members to come out and to uh, support, uh, support our festival. In the past few weeks, probably three or four weeks or so, uh, we've had our new, um, it's called a Sin Revoice program in place. And for those parents who have not had their child miss any schools in the past four or five weeks, um, what that program is, is if your child is not in school for whatever reason, whether they're sick uh, due to weather, or if they're out of town or whatnot, um, we put the information into the computer uh, if, if a child is absent. And at 9.30 to 10.30 in the mornings, a call will go home. It's an automated call. Uh, so once a child is not in school, it goes into the system and the call gets made. Uh, and then in the afternoon from 1.30 to 2.30, the same thing. Now we've had a number of parents who would call us and say, uh, my child will be out for the next day or two or three days. Um, I guess kind of to let us know so the system won't call. but. The system don't work that way. We've got to put the attendance into our, our computer system, which then the call-outs will automatically go. So if you notify us your child's not going to be in school, just kind of, just don't worry about the phone call you're going to get. But again, you will get one in the morning and one in the afternoon. Um, we did have school close uh, one day, I think, two or three weeks ago. Um, the system was not um, completely set up then for the uh, for close close out due to weather or whatnot, but right now if there is a close out for any reason in the future, um, that system will be the same thing. Now I'm asking parents, please do not throw away your, your phone trees, just in case, you know, we all know what technology is like and things happen. If for some reason the program don't work, um, when school happened to be closed, uh, we will have to rely on our phone trees. So please keep those and uh, if there's any questions with the Sinry Voice, um, please let us, let us know, give us a call. Uh, and again, a lot of parents are calling right after they get a call saying that my child's out for this reason. And I really like that part. Um, some parents and some kids um, forget or they lose notes when we bring them back if kids are sick or whatnot. 
Uh, now you just, you know, if you call back, let us know. Uh, use these flyers that will write it down. Let the teacher know um, your child was out sick and then it goes into the register that's sick. So uh, right now the program is going very nice and it, it, it can do a lot more from what I've been told. We're just getting into it. So I'm sure into next year and beyond that, um, the system can be used for a lot of other things that when we get to that point, we'll let you know. Uh, a couple of things coming up over the next um, month or so. Uh, we have our Volunteer Appreciation Week on April 11th through the 14th. Uh, some activities are being planned for our volunteers. But I just want to kind of just uh, right now say a, a big thank you to all our volunteers. Uh, and that's, you know, obviously our snack ladies. We have volunteers in for our book fair. Um, you know, individual teachers have parents and volunteers in for various reasons. And again, I want to say a big thank you to... Uh, to our community and, and the people who get involved in our school, it, it is great to see. Um, I spoke earlier about the external review that a group comes in to do that with our school. Uh, two weeks ago, I had the opportunity to go out and do the same thing to another school. And one of the big uh, complaints at the school I was at uh, was that there's not enough parent volunteers. Um, I don't think parent support is not the right word, but I guess getting parents into the school. And I can say that's, that's not an issue we got here. And again, it's very nice to see. So again, um, again, a big thank you to volunteers and uh, happy Appreciation Week uh, when it gets there. We also have a Student Appreciation Week. Uh, that's the week of, or before um, Easter break. Uh, so the Monday to Thursday uh, will be Student Appreciation Week. I think that's April the 18th through 21st. Again, we have some activities planned. Um, I've had a couple comments from, from parents and whatnot that we don't do a lot for Education Week. And that was something we decided uh, a few years back that uh, our Student Appreciation Week kind of takes place of Education Week because uh, this past week was Education Week. Uh, a number of schools get real involved in Education Week. But again, we, we just kind of changed it around a little bit and put it to, uh, to that uh, this year, April 18th through 21st. So uh, uh, again, activities will be involved there. and. Um, I'm sure the students will enjoy uh, that week. Uh, one thing I just want to remind um, drivers, uh, again, um, be careful in front of our school uh, where they're dropping, they're dropping off ch children, uh, picking them up. Um, the speed limit is, uh, I think it's 15 kilometers per hour or 10 kilometers per hour. Um, just be cognizant of the parking. They can get congested, uh, certainly at, um, at lunchtime, dirty weather. And whatnot, but uh, there's plenty of parking space in my opinion, so please use the proper parking spaces. And again, you know, we have a policy that uh, parents are not allowed to auto the vehicles and have the vehicles running while waiting for their child. Uh, so, again, just want to remind parents to please, uh, if, if you're coming here at 11 30, quarter 12, turn off your vehicle. Um, you know, you're saving gas, saving money um, with the price of gas, obviously, that's a good thing, but. Uh, you know, in front of our school, if you're on school grounds, we just ask that you turn up your vehicles when your child comes out, then you can start your vehicle and obviously then you leave uh, in, in the proper manner. Um, there's only one other thing that I have. Now, I'm sure I'm forgetting some things, but, uh, you know, there's, again, it's a number of things we've been involved in, uh, a number of things coming up. Um, I want to go back and discuss the, the awards night. Um, it's kind of a tough one, I guess, to, to mention, and I thought about uh, how to bring it out, and I guess it's just a matter of, of, of talking about it. Um, this year, our awards night had finished at 8.30, uh, and we have a dance um, around 10 o'clock that same night. Now, this year it was on a Tuesday night. Uh, school closed on Wednesday at 1 o'clock. So we had a dance for our uh, grade 7 to 12 students. Uh, now, this is the only dance that we have all year. Back three or four years ago, uh, we canceled all the other dances because um, there was alcohol, there was beer brought into our school. And the same thing happened at our awards night dance. And underage drinking is, is obviously a concern um, for everyone. Uh, it's, it's a major concern for myself. Um, I'm sure it's not only in this community, it's right across this province, this country, it, it's everywhere I'm sure. But the concern I got is that um, when awards night was finished at 8.30 and everybody was gone, at 10 to 10, an hour and 20 minutes later, all the kids were in for that dance. I think we had about 50 or 60 kids. Um, 
they were our kids, seven, seven to 12 kids this year, and there were like two or three um, of the great 12s from last year were there. And the next day, the janitor found a beer bottle in one of the bathrooms. Now, Mrs. Penny and myself were chaperones. Um, very honest, very upfront. I did not notice anything, didn't see anything. But in an hour and 20 minutes again, there was alcohol brought into the school. Um, and with some investigation, I guess, that, that I, I, I've, I haven't found out any names or whatnot, but um, speaking with some students or whatnot, uh, I've been told that a number of our kids were drinking. So on a Tuesday night, drinking period's an issue, but on Tuesday night, on a school night, after awards night, hour and 20 minutes at a dance, we get students coming in drinking. Um, and the students in our school right now. I know we had some issues that night that there was a, a pair of sneakers were stolen and a cell phone. Um, I thank goodness that was found and returned to the owners the next day. Um, was the beer bottle brought in by the same person that stole those items, which was not a student in our school? Um, it's possible. But again, when I started looking into it and started speaking to some of the students individually and whatnot, uh, I was told that there were, our kids were drinking. So I think as parents, you need to be made aware of that. Uh, what's going to happen in the future uh, with respect to, to the dances? You know, there's a number of things we can do. Uh, we can cancel them completely. I think that's unfortunate that if, if we go that route, that because of whether it's 1, 10, 20 students that we're drinking, it's going to make it bad for everybody else. I don't like that idea. Um, I can certainly have the RCP come in when kids are coming in for the dance. When the awards night is finished, Kids can all stay there. The dance starts at, let's say, 9 o'clock. Nobody leaves. We know they're not drinking. Um, but it, it, it's very sad and very disheartening, very disrespectful um, that our students are doing that. And, uh, you know, I just want to make um, parents aware of it. Certainly, if you have any questions or concerns, uh, I'd appreciate hearing from you. Um, if you have any suggestions on what we can do, um, I, I'm, I'm, my ears are open, and I would certainly... You know, I'd love to get back to a point where we can have regular dances throughout the year. The grads this year wanted to have an Halloween dance, and I just couldn't do it. And again, you know, two months later into December, this is this is what's being done. So, uh, you know, that's that's where it's to. Uh, no names were mentioned to me of of who was drinking. Um, if if names are mentioned or whatnot, if I do find out for some reason uh, in in the future, I will be making contacts at home. But uh, Again, I just want to make uh, everyone aware of that, and um, you know, next year for the awards night, I guess we'll make a decision before that time of what will happen uh, with regarding the dances. But on that note, um, again, we are certainly two thirds getting to three quarters of, of the year in. Again, it's been a very busy year. Uh, I want to thank everybody for for all their hard work. Um, as I've already said, I think our students can do a little bit more work, um, and down the home stretch now. Of, Final exams, CRTs uh, rolling around. Uh, certainly, certainly encourage everyone to uh, the best that they can. And I mean, we have some very good students, very bright students. Um, I just think some can be doing a little bit better. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm sure we'll do this again, uh, hopefully, in the next month or so. This concludes our program for tonight. Thank you for watching. Good night.